Neurofeedback and meditation, how are they related? I'm Dr. Trish Lee, let me tell you how. Okay, so first of all, for a long time, I've worked with many people who have come into my office and have said to me, I meditate every day for an hour. But then we do their brain map and that we can see that even though they think they're meditating for an hour every day, they are likely spinning their wheels for an hour because in their brain map, it shows that their brain is using too much beta and high beta fast and extra fast speeds. Those are the speeds that create overdrive and anxiety. And so many of these people say, you know, either they feel anxious sometimes or they say, you know what, I really don't feel like I feel anxious. And then I'll ask them a couple questions like, you know, what do you do to relax? And they'll say, mm, relaxing, I'm not really good at that and they're goers and they're doers. That's overdrive. If you're constantly going and doing, your nervous system is constantly going and doing. Your brain is on, 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 overdrive mode. So what's the role and how are neurofeedback and meditation related? This is how it works. When you are actually meditating and you're able to do it without any assistance, you are calming your brain down and actually you're probably raising your theta speed, your slow speed, which is shifting your brain more towards sleep. But if you can dangle yourself near theta and that's a slow speed and alpha medium speed for calmness, what you're doing is you're giving your nervous system a break and it's recovering from all the use of that high fast speed in the betas. And if you're successful at it during your meditations, you may, first of all, hopefully you can feel an empty mind. If you haven't felt that, it is like a massage for your mind. It is so glorious to just have an empty mind. Um, it is one of the best feelings in the world and that's what meditation does. So when you get into theta and alpha, your mind is empty, but you may have thoughts of creativity too because theta is known for creativity as long as you don't fall asleep. So when you are successfully in a meditative state, it's calming your brain down, it's relaxing it, and you're getting a little bit of a brain massage. But that will carry over into your life. You will feel a calmer, more relaxed demeanor. You will not have hypervigilance where you're looking out for issues. You will be able to go with the flow. So if you feel like you have a meditation practice, but you're not that go with the flow, likely during your meditation, times you may not be reaching that alpha state and so that is the goal of neurofeedback first of all if your brain is stuck in overdrive or anxiety mode and you sit down it's very difficult to get into that alpha meditative state without any assistance what neurofeedback does for you is it gives you the feedback of when your brain is producing more alpha and when it's producing less beta so you know for sure that you are being successful. Not only does it do that, it doesn't just give you the feedback that you're being successful, it is constantly moving you towards greater levels of success through automatic thresholding. So what automatic thresholding is, it means that it will level your brain up to a little bit harder level to produce more alpha and less beta incrementally. So it's scaffolding you towards success because if you're using high beta, out of the gates and then you just start meditating, it's bridging the gap from high beta to alpha is like this. What neurofeedback does is it gradually bridges the gap like this, bringing your alpha up and your high beta down without covering my face, we're bridging that gap incrementally. And then that is how it becomes successful because you need to be able to have time and training so we need time, training, and thresholding. The triple, th the triple T's is the way that I see it, the three T's. You need time, it, this doesn't happen overnight. So you need to be able to practice this skill. You need training because you need assistance in spending that time training and that's what the thresholding is too. Okay, so that's how they're related. Now in the end, if you go through a neurofeedback program and you're working with the highest levels of professionals, you should be able to get the greatest amount of gains in the shortest amount of time. That means that we bridge that gap incrementally and in the end, your brain is using the calm focused mode. Now it's time for you to build the habit of meditation. And 
if you've seen other videos of mine, you will know that I am a huge fan of neuro meditation. It's still guided meditation with the savviest tools that are available out there on the market. And if you work with me, I make sure you know what those tools are that you can use forever in the end without a fee. So once we get your brain there, you have neuro meditation tools to keep you there, but then you also build a meditation practice without a tool. And that is the way that you can be very, very successful. We shift your brain with neurofeedback. You're now in the optimal mode. You use neuro meditation techniques and tools. You build your meditation practice. You ride off into the 